Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 128 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron, and I'm so glad you're here with me. Today, I'm talking to the awesome Beth Barani, who is a friend of mine, and she's in the writing industry, both in fiction and in helping other people to write. And um, today, we talk about the importance of play in writing. Play is something that I forget about because I get so serious and graspy of my words. I must hold them and catch them and wrangle them and pin them to the page. Sometimes we just got to have fun, which is something that I have been finding out with this new fun side gig book. I guess I'm kind of like cheating on the book I need to be writing with this other book that I'm writing. And it is so fun. I'm just having such a marvelous time. <clears throat> you can tell my voice is a little bit hoarse. Speaking of fun, I was in my band last night playing a gig until after midnight in the city. And I go to bed usually at 9, maybe 9.30, sometimes 8. Don't laugh. It's real. I like to get in bed and read every night. And I uh, couldn't do that last night. So I'm a little bit hoarse, a little bit, um, I feel hungover from fun. I did not drink, but uh, I feel a little hungover. So, and today I get to go up the coast to Bodega Bay, which is where um, The Birds was filmed. That house is still there. So we are having a nice little weekend away for our 13th anniversary, together 15 years, married 13. She is still my favorite person. That's pretty great and fun. So that's on tap this weekend. So um, this podcast uh, is coming to you a little bit late because yesterday was a heck of a busy day. Um, what's going on in my world? Honestly, not too much. Just writing and working and words are, words are getting on the page and they don't suck that much. Um, they often suck quite a bit, but they don't suck that much. And that's pretty great. I hope that that is happening for you in some way, shape or form. I want to thank new patrons um, who got fun little videos right now when you sign up as a patron. Um, I send you a personalized video of whatever I'm doing right then, uh, which has been a pretty great thing to do. So I've already chatted with these people. But thanks again, Christina Georgie and Michaela Withers and Cami Osman. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for your supporting. You can always go over to patreon.com slash Rachel, R-A-C-H-A-E-L, and sign up. You get my essays. Um, which are my favorite things that I write. And you can get text messages from me. You can get coaching from me all up there on that page. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to fill you in on. So let's jump right into the interview. Uh, I was, <laughs> was accused the other day on YouTube, very friendly, like of not being concise. I will agree. I'm very, very rarely concise, except in my writing in my essays, I do work on that. In my talk in life, on the videos, on the podcast, no, I am never concise. I don't think that's what you guys come to me for. You'd go to somebody else for that. So I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. I hope that you get some of your own writing done, and then I hope that you come and tell me about it. You can always find me at howdoyouwrite.net. Enjoy this interview with Beth. Okay, well, I could not be more pleased today to welcome my friend Beth Ferrani to the show. Hello, Beth. Hi, Rachel. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> Let me give you a little introduction here. Beth Barani is an award-winning novelist, a master neuro-linguistic programming practitioner, that is not easy to say, and certified creativity coach for writers. She specializes in helping writers experience clarity so they can write, revise, and proudly publish their novels to the delight of their readers. Her courses are packed with useful hands-on information that you can implement right away. She runs Barani School of Fiction, an online school for fiction writers, and a 12-month group coaching coaching program to help them get published. More resources on publishing, book marketing, and novel writing are at her blog, The Writer's Fun Zone. And when she's not helping writers, Beth writes magical tales of romance, mystery, and adventure that empower women and girls to be the heroes of their own lives. So welcome. We know each other through our local RWA, Romance Writers of America chapter, which we are both proud members of. Yes, yes. Gosh, I, I remember when you stood up and announced how you had written your first book. Oh, that was so awesome. <laughs> I did that so backwards. I remember that the first meeting I went to, I stood up and I announced that I'd sold it. Like I had written it and sold it in a three book deal and I had never heard of RWA. And it was after I had been doing that for years by myself that I found the most amazing group of writers, you know. So I've, I've never looked back, never looked back. That's been... 
11 years ago that would have been now wow yeah we're awesome we are awesome (laughs) rwa is the best so you are prolific you get a whole lot done and you're teaching i would love to know about your process how do you make this work where what is your writing process for your own writing yeah, so it, it varies depending on the stage I'm in. So I'll take you through like the linear stage because yeah. I'm very linear. I am too. <laughs> but within each stage tends to be quite messy. So I start with planning uh, and I have a process that is now a book and a class and it's came because I needed it. So I developed this process and I use it. And I usually have been quite organized about it. I usually um, teach a plan your novel class in October and I do it right alongside the students. I I planned something and I did that last in 2016. I planned um, the first book in a four book series. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I go to cafes and plan. That's my favorite thing to do. I have a little portable keyboard. Um, Actually, it's connected. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's connected to my laptop right now. Um, Wow, that looks like a nice portable keyboard. It's so cool. It's full size. Folds up. Yeah, folds up. What is the brand? uh, Jeez, I don't know. I'll have to look it up and, and give it to you. Yeah, I would love I to know. Have, I have a stand for the phone and I have a little case and it slips right into my backpack and I can write on my phone, which is awesome. Do you do that in Google Docs? Or... No, Scrivener. Oh, because you have an iPhone. Yes, I have oh. an iPhone. I am, yeah, I love Scrivener. I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Scrivener is my friend and, you know, I have little files for all the research. I have all the notes for the book. So in the planning stage, it's all at cafes and, um, I often have a writing buddy, my husband, though not always, um, because I love to write at lunchtime, Mm. which um, it's like a very specific time of day, like between 11, 11.30 and say two o'clock is my sweet spot really for creating um, for for both the planning phase and the writing phase. That is not a, that's not a common answer. It's not. Like either morning, afternoon or evening, but lunch is not one that comes up. Yeah, it's like I want my lunch, (laughs) I want my hour, 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes two hours, depending how it goes. Um, And I just, I just block it off. It's, it's a big fat lunch break, Mm -hmm. big fat lunch break Mm -hmm. on my calendar. Uh, I just, I just love that. And it's such a luxurious feeling. And maybe it's, it maybe grew out of, you know, I spent time in Paris. I lived in, in Paris twice and, and the Europeans, they know how to take, they know how to take their time with their lunch. I will argue though that you're working. <laughs> yes. But to me, it's like the ultimate play. And for me, yeah. writing is play. So it's you creative. are a, are you a huge planner then? Is the whole book planned out? No. Um, because I, in my planning process, I know I spent a lot of time on character. Mm-hmm. I spent a lot of time on the major arc of the story plot wise, the, where I'm aiming for the arc for the character and some of the main big events. And then because the series I'm working on right now is mystery, what I did is I set up the clues. I'm the investigator. So I set up the crime. I set up the original clues and I'm like, go. And so I didn't want to solve it in the planning process. <laughs> oh, not. that's fabulous. All I knew is that she would solve it. That's all I knew. Okay. That's, yeah. that's insane. I've, yeah. I've heard other mystery writers talk like that. And I just don't know. It's I, I think that that just, you have such, you have to have such a trust in yourself as a writer, right? Yeah. yeah. That's Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. And this is, uh, so I wrote four books in seven months and I would definitely, I wrote each book in about six weeks and they're short. They're like wow. 50,000 words. Uh-huh. And, um, and then I, I would take a little, maybe a week off and then plan the next one, give myself a month to plan book two, write the darn thing. And, you know, four to six weeks, sometimes eight weeks, take another week off, then go into the planning. And I did that over, I did that in seven months and I do trust I've been, so I wanted to say that these were books, let's see, 16, 15, 14, 13. So these, this is number 13 through 16 in terms of manuscripts written. Wow. So I've learned a lot over the years to just really trust myself. And even if there's a lot of weird things, loose ends, things that go nowhere, it's like, it's all right, it's all right. And that it's all, all figured out. That is, that is something that really comes with doing, but every writer, I think we all have that. And we, but we, I think some of us have to learn that the hard way, you know, that it is stressful for those first few books. If listeners are saying, how do you trust yourself? You just do. And you can't, you are trustworthy that way. So what is your writing process look like? Are you um, time-based or word count based? Uh, in the planning process, that's just time-based. And it's not even really, it has to be X amount of time. It's more like I have these 
pieces or these modules to go through. Mm-hmm. And, and I know that it takes about 10 to 15 hours and I spread it out over a month. So it feels very spacious. Mm-hmm. Then when I flip into writing, it's word count. I am super word count oriented. Yeah. Um, what does a normal day look like? It could be, you know, on on a slow day. So at the beginning, it's really slow, and so sometimes it's maybe 250 to 500 words, mm-hmm. and then it then I move it up to about a thousand words, uh, and then on a good day, it's 2,000 words. Yeah, and yeah. Then on an amazing day, it's plus plus whatever, you know. So it usually starts flying, you know, from about a quarter of the way through until toward the end. Sometimes toward the end, it starts to peter out. I get I get scared, or I'm like, oh no, how am I going to resolve? And because um, my endings kind of suck in the first draft. Well, beginning. Yeah, but, yeah, but mine too. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But I get kind of stressed, uh, and then it might peter out to slow, slow trickling. Or if I take uh, three days off, or if I, if there, for whatever reason I'm away from the story, I sometimes come back to the writing at 250 to 500 words or 700 words. It's okay because I just know it's like my brain is is uh, it's slow. It so. sounds like you really have a, a a very good handle on your process though, and I and I love that. What is your biggest challenge when it comes to writing? Gosh, uh, er, uh, it used to be finishing. I mean, literally like getting ready to publish and letting go of the book uh, because I'm indie. I, it was all up to me. It's all on me. I remember <laughs> it took you a while for Henrietta. To... Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it did. It did. And when I finally decided to self-publish, it was easy, but yeah. letting go of that. And, and yeah, the final, like hitting that publish button, is my blurb okay? Is my cover okay? What are people going to think? Yeah, that is so, so hard. And I think I, I kind of got over that, uh, especially because I did five romances, five novellas pretty quickly, mm-hmm. five and two years or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that helped me just let it go. Also, I felt less attached to them because Henrietta, the Dragon Slayer, she's got my heart. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she still has my heart, even though I have now four books of Janie McAllister, Investigator. Um, nobody, I'm still working on Henrietta stuff. I, oh, I can't. She's can't she's your go. she's your girl. <laughs> yeah, I, I have the TV series in mind, so I'm oh, doing scripts. <laughs> nice. What is your um, what is your biggest joy when it comes to writing? Mm, I was thinking about this before the call. I, and I'm kind of in this phase right now with my my Janie McAllister books is is really when I get down to the sentence level and I'm really picking the right word oh, and yeah. Really, yeah I'm just loving that the texture I really feel like I've gotten to know her now really well and although there's still some more to do but I love picking out the right word the right noun the right the actual the best verb and and just and also you know how she sees the world and all of that texture and I have the challenge of being on a space station set in the future so I get to recreate I get to create all of that and really feel into it. And, and then all that comes down to the sentence level and picking the right word. And, and it is such a joy. It's, it's kind of stressful, but it's also where all the magic happens. And that's where I'm at right now with the editing process. That's, that's my, also my favorite part is, is after the, you're past the big revisions and you're into like the smoothing out and making everything beautiful. Oh, delicious, delicious. Um, can you share a quick craft tip of any sort with us? Yeah, I was thinking about this ahead of time as well. And it kind of comes back to creative process that you and I have already talked about. I really do feel like um, what we do is play. I mean, it's serious play because we're like putting it out into the world, Mm want to make money, want to touch hearts and minds. But it's also this tremendous amount of play. And when I'm tapping tapped into that and and really look at my work as um, like multiple takes. And I do this with my students as well. My clients, I'm like, just take one. Okay, do take five. Okay, do you take nine? Like, it's okay. Let's play. You know, we are the scene director and the set designer, the lighting, we're everything, the actors and just play, just see what it's like, because that's where you discover the edges and what's true for you. And so that element of playfulness, um, just let it loose because as children, we all played. I think most of us, hopefully that's, and it's our natural state. So when we bring that into our work, oh my goodness, it's, we can fly. Even if we don't know what we're doing, we can still fly. Just like it is when you're kids. What do you do? This is a selfish question because I struggle with this. Um, what do you do when you lose sight of play and it becomes work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, take a break, man. Go for a walk. <laughs> Get 
<laughs> good away answer. from the computer. And I'm so like rigid. I will, I will like get closer to the computer and cramp my fingers, you know? Yeah. yeah no, well, you're, you're totally my right. computer stops working. It's almost as if the machine is like feeling all my broken energy and it will stop working. I have to like get up. I have to go out. I have to go pet the cat. I have to go be in nature. If you could, yeah. if you could write an app that would do that, like shut off your computer when you're too stressed out, I would pay a lot of money for that. That's so cool. We could have it synced up in your brainwave so that when you're like getting too hard on yourself or something, it would exactly. just stop working. Yeah, you get you think ten mean thoughts to yourself, you're you're out, you're out. Yeah, it's walk time. It. You <laughs> Okay, I might put that into my science fiction. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Okay, so what is the thing in writing um, Mm -hmm. that you are most excited either to talk or think about when you're with a group of other writers, like at RWA or anywhere else? um, What is the topic that you always return to? Mm. Gosh, I I don't know. I I love so much all of it. (laughs) I think something that I'm really excited about is, is like the scope of projects, like project management. I like thinking about... Mm how long does the project take? Well, given X, Y, Z going on in one's life, what, what is realistic here? Um, and just feeling into how one can actually fit the writing into your daily life and, and how long it can actually take. Cause this is something I think about constantly for myself and I, and my clients. And it's like, am I being reasonable? Am I being realistic? Oh, when do I need to start with the cover designer? Okay. What about okay, I got to do my beta readers in a few months. Okay. You know, it's like, I think about the whole project. I, I like that. I like the bigness of creating these projects of creating these books. Do you find that you're accurate? Because as a project manager for myself, I am 24 books later, wildly inaccurate. I always think I can do it faster than I can do it. Um, even though I know that. Yeah. I, it's hard to say, I, I guess I have to say I'm not entirely accurate, but then other things happen outside of us. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I had planned for these four books to start releasing this year, but I realized I'm actually going to push it. I'm going to push it out in a year. And that felt realistic. And yeah. my father died last year. He was mm. sick for three years. Like I didn't really know. I just, I put some deadline far in the future. And as I start to get closer, I'm like, is that realistic or not? Like, I didn't know when he would die. I didn't know how it, it would impact mm-hmm. me. Like how mm-hmm. last year needed to be kind of a slower kind of year mm. uh, on some levels, you know? And so uh, I like to give myself a lot of time, but I think, I think I can do it. I think I can get book one ready for the fall to try and get early reviews. Given the state of the books now, I, I think I can do it. So I, I generally have a pretty good realist idea, but then always things happen right outside of our control. And so I also try to make room for that, which, uh, yeah, I need a lot of room. I need a lot of room. (laughs) I do too. Yeah. I don't try. I mean, I might write fast because it's fun and I have momentum, but I edit really slow. Mm, That's interesting. Yeah. That's very cool. By the time these four books start coming out next year, it will have been four years. So it's like a book a year, which is kind of normal kind of in the right. older traditional styles of not going crazy <laughs> right yeah my, uh, my goal someday is to write a book a year and make enough money from that to live comfortably you know wouldn't that be just that would ideal be amazing. yeah that would be wonderful well that's awesome um what is the best book you've read recently and why did you love it I had to just, I had to make notes on this because <laughs> I've been reading up a storm I'm reading tons of books and I read a lot of nonfiction. so I have two nonfiction books and a fiction yay to tell, you. tell okay. us so I read Thinking in Systems by Danello Meadows okay. last year, and it's a nonfiction book. It's pretty short. It's about systems thinking, which I just love. And being a science fiction writer, having to make up my own worlds and a fantasy writer, it's like I love understanding what our systems and how actually pretty unpredictable they are. And she's like one of the main people in the field. Um, it's a really good book. I've and literally then, like never given any thought to that. Oh, you, you'd love My it. My brain just broke trying to think about systems. Yeah, <laughs> it's really fascinating. Scientists and the, you know, professors and such in the 60s started turning it into a, uh, a discipline. You can get a PhD in it wow. now. Yeah, and it's really interesting how they've like found all these different ways to think and talk about systems and analyze them and apply that into the real world. It's, it's That's fascinating. That's really neat, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then... The other one I actually listened to on audio recently is called What Every Body is Saying by Joe Navarro. He is former FBI, mm. and it's all about reading body language. Ooh, that's 
awesome. What did you, it's what great. can you think of something you learned from that book off the top um, of your head? Sure. Well, either um, people are either comfortable or, in, or uncomfortable or in discomfort. So when you're interviewing someone, say when my investigator is interviewing someone, she could tell that someone's a question made them uncomfortable. Maybe the way they put their eyebrows, furrow their eyebrows, or maybe they frown quickly, or maybe they uh, rub their ear with their shoulder. But she might not, but it doesn't mean they're lying. This guy was saying, you cannot, there is no tell for lying. There's only tells for discomfort. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. So interesting. Which is so great to be able to write into nuanced characters, right? Because yeah. as we write what we see our characters doing, our readers are understanding because we understand visceral movements and body movements, even if we couldn't put words to it. So I think that's that's awesome. Yeah. Good, I want to read that. Yeah, it's really fun. And then um, the novel I recently read that I really love, and I've been thinking about the next book in her series uh, and wanting to read that. So the first, this one is called Code of Conduct. And it's by Christine with a K Smith. And I, I love science fiction and I love when it's the main character is a woman. And she's she's kind of a hard bitten woman who's um, not wanting to get drawn back into the politics of her situation, but having to. And she's kind of a badass and can pull that out at a moment's notice. And uh, and I just I think I don't know what to say more about it other than I can't wait to read the, the sequel. What kind of science fiction is it in space or? Uh, it's it's Earth and uh, colonies and it's mm -hmm. like in some far future. And it, it feels like it's a lot about um, it's a lot about augmented humans. Mm -hmm. She has some kind of AI in her brain that kicks in when she's in a stressful situation. It's a military like a soldier training oh, AI. Cool. And then there's this other culture that has a completely other way of thinking and behaving. It feels like. Christine, the author, is like a linguist, a broad in linguistical understanding about how different ways of communicating and different values. And so it's a culture clash between different cultures and uh, trying to understand the powers behind the powers. You know, somebody's after her and she doesn't know why. That sounds so, beautiful. That sounds really yeah, fun. It's really, really I don't interesting. Read, I don't read much science fiction, but that might, I might make an exception for that one. That's awesome. So now you've talked about those. Talk about yourself. Yes. Where can we find you? What do you do? Okay. What would you like to tell us about as writers in particular? Sure. Um, well, I'd love to share with your listeners and, and watchers our latest book, Plan Your Novel Like a Pro. It's got all kinds of post-its in it because I was using love it to it. teach recently <laughs> at a live workshop um, in Saudi Arabia, of all places. Uh <sighs> Yeah, pretty amazing. That was so, really cool. Uh, it's amazing. I, I'm really excited to share Plan Your Novel Like a Pro with folks um, because it's it really helps people unlock their creativity. And also people who have already written manuscripts tell me that it helped them like fix their manuscript, which I didn't expect. I thought that was pretty amazing. Uh, so you can find this, of course, anywhere, Plan Your Novel Like a Pro. And you can find me, Beth Barani, on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram are my three favorite places. Um, and bethbrawny.com, which will lead you to my blog and the rest of my empire. And you really are very, very helpful in the in the writer-author sphere. You've always done a lot of giving back, which I really appreciate about you. So thank you for that. And thank you for being on the show today. It's just nice to chat with you and have some extra time. Sorry, my cat, I think, has been yelling the whole podcast. I hope you cannot hear him. I, I heard a little, but that's oh, okay. Oh, goodness. It's, he's, <laughs> he's adorable. Well, thank you, Beth, so you, much. And happy writing to you. And I'm going to see you soon, I'm sure. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. You're this welcome. was great fun. <laughs> Bye. Bye.